it's if 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 this goes on for some time, uh, people with asthma and other conditions may have a little bit of a worry because you know that ash is so fine; it can be it can be you know very dusty material that gets into your lungs, so it it, it can it can actually cause death in, in some cases. So that's one health concern. The, the reason we have volcanism there to begin with is because it's the plate tectonic boundary. Uh, so there's uh, there's two plates: the North American plate on one side, the Eurasian plate on the other. And they're actually moving apart from one another. And as they move apart, well, that means the hot material underneath, the mantle, uh, can rise up and melt. So it's an area of common volcanism. It's one of the most volcanically active places on Earth. But what's happening in Iceland that's different is that this is occurring underneath a glacier. And what's happening is the glacier ice is melting and the magma is mixing with the water and this is a bad combination. This produces really explosive type of, of eruptions. The, 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 the biggest problem with this eruption is in the eruptive column, the, the plume that comes up above uh, the, the volcano. The more explosive the eruption is, uh, the greater the ash cloud will be taken into the high atmosphere. If that cloud is relatively low, it doesn't cause much of a problem. But once it gets up into several miles height, uh, up around 20 or 30,000 feet, as this one is, uh, then it can cause a lot of problem. What's, what's in that ash cloud are very, very small particulate matter, sort of sand grain size uh, material. In essence, what that is, is it's the lava that's, uh, that's been obliterated by the explosiveness of the eruption, uh, little bits of, bits of material. We've learned from the past that when airplanes travel through that, uh, that ash gets clogged up into the jet engines. And once that happens, it turns into a glassy substance, and then the jet engines can seize. It's the escaping gases that drive it. So as long as those gases are there, then, then that can power an explosive eruption. So in this case, the gas is not only coming from the gas that's dissolved in the magma, but it's also mixing with the steam being created by the melting glacier. And that's what's making it more explosive. So how long that'll last, nobody really knows. Uh, they're, you know, one of the largest eruptions of basalt anywhere in historic times was in Iceland in 1783. It's called the Lockheed eruption. And that lasted for a long period of time. And it created uh, great atmospheric effects. And that, in fact, it caused famine. Uh, about half of the population of Iceland was lost, you know, died because of that. Uh, so that was a, you know, disastrous eruption of the same kind. Um, it's kind of hard to tell right now how long this eruption is going to last. It, it could last for days, it could last for weeks, it could go on for months. We, we just don't know.